we'll actually have red weeks, orange weeks, green weeks. And you know, we know, for example, in our red weeks that we'll be at that kind of top level, um, maybe in three sessions. Uh, and, you know, and then there'll be some other sessions that don't kind of hit, hit that max effort. So, um, and in, in the weeks outside of that, like whenever you're playing a game, like if we play a game on the Saturday, like you're going to get into that zone of just like maximal exertion. So um, I think that it's kind of unrealistic to expect yourself to be able to go there like on repeat all the time. You have to be able to do it at the right times and, and recover properly from it. You know, you have to push your body to the limit to see how far you can go and also to stress the body enough so that it adapts. Um, but as Lena alluded to, you can't stay there consistently and it's going your season. So there'll be certain training sessions for each game, your output is, is through the roof, but then it's knowing your training week so that you don't uh, push it too far. So some trainings are, are lower level and you know the ones you have plenty of time to prep for the ones that uh, are going to be high output. And that's where the recovery comes in between. And probably my biggest learning and what has helped me do that is I don't need to be doing extra training on rest days because my body's already fatigued. And the fact I can back that up with a bit of data and say, look, you need to rest today and I need to take a bit of time out or you can take your gym session just to take it a bit easier. That's that's been important for me because you really can't stay at that that high level and I've tried it before to keep pushing, pushing, pushing and the body's just broken down. Definitely everything is tailored and um, so you would have blocks as you said throughout the year and you'd know obviously coming up to big championship games that you'd be tailoring and you'd be kind of winding down and lead up to it. Um, but yeah, we would be kind of made aware that look, the next six weeks is going to be a tough block um, and in those six weeks then you just really need to mind yourself. So you need to ensure that you're recovering properly, sleeping properly, you know, eating the right foods and, and drinking enough water all of the time. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's definitely tailored and there is kind of blocks throughout the year where you're nearly dreading the block because you know it's going to be really difficult and you know that it's going to take an awful lot out of you. For us right now, it's been difficult um, to kind of hit those targets in training. Um, we've got a really busy schedule. We've essentially kind of got three games a week, obviously due to different cups we're in Champions League and then the league itself as well. So, but in pre-season, um, for sure, I think it's so important. Obviously, our, our S&C guys and and coaches design sessions to make sure we're exposed to that level of training to prepare us obviously going into the season um, and high intensity games. Um, but yeah, kind of getting the exposure in matches right now and being kind of not running for the sake of running, but being effective in what you're doing too um, is, is really important. And because we haven't had a lot of training sessions, you're trying to we do a bit of analysis to kind of look at okay well are your runs effective um and and kind of look to build off that um but definitely as i said it's you need to be exposed to it to make sure you're prepared for going into a game um i leave that one up to the coaches to make sure um i'm prepared for that it's difficult for us but it's, it's really important i think um you know it got, not going back to that injury last year with the hamstring that was because i hadn't been exposed to that that level of uh, high speed running as, as frequently as they, I should have been like the physio showed me all the graphs from uh, when I was at Munster and I was rarely hitting the, the high speed running that I, that I should be hitting and then I went into camp and that went through the roof and then and, and I ended up doing an injury so um, that's really important especially for me since, since that injury uh, I really look at that data and make sure I'm getting getting those exposures because a game like in training our training can be ridiculously quick in terms versus a game um, just because we're we don't do much contact during the week because you're going to be getting that contact uh, in the game and you're going to be sore from it so there's no point making each other sore before before the game so we we do a lot of technical like tackle work and um, entry and all, and all that stuff so you're you're kind of mentally prepped and you've, you've kind of walk through it in your head but um, the days of like full on tackles and, and ma training matches are gone We're, it's really smart now um, especially with all the concussion stuff as well like it's you don't need to be hitting people all, all week long and then go in and, into a match and literally try to take the head off people so um, yeah but but coaches are very aware of it they, um, they're aware of like the exposures we need on a, on a Tuesday and Wednesday um, 
and the, yeah, and training is harder than than games. Definitely in camp, we we train at a really high a high tempo. So um, once you go into a game, then like Eddie said, it's you know you, you feel really confident that you can you can last the the whole distance and and, and perform before the World Championships. That's like our main peak of the year. So we'd have like a huge block, maybe two or three weeks out, and then recover from that. And hopefully we get a bit of super compensation and be on top form then. We have uh, a few at certain points in the year that you're just dreading every week, like, because they're so grim. But um, you kind of just make sure that you're getting, you know, the recovery shake in straight after, having a nap after as well. And then hopefully you'll be good for the evening session because the evening session that day then might be like a, you know, a, like a long, easy paddle, just kind of flushing out the, the legs from the morning. It's tricky because you, during the league, as much as you might say it's still pre-season, it's game week on week. So it's 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 it's, it's key there and it, the training load is being monitored. So I suppose that's a big thing we would focus on where if you haven't hit certain markers, then you can't go into this in a session, or you can't go, you can't play this game if you haven't hit certain markers. And that, as I suppose, in terms of injury prevention. So, I suppose there's there's, uh, there's no real uh, hiding behind the fact that if you haven't hit certain markers, or if you're on your way back from an injury, uh, you're going to break down. If um, again, if, if if let's just say if the work isn't in the legs, but as the season goes on, then I suppose you're you're just looking at trying to get maybe periods where if you're, there's a two week break, can you do two heavy sessions this week? And there might be a four week break after the league then. Um, and I suppose that's a period you're probably dreading because you're, you've had you've had a tough league. You've been on the road for, for, for a good few weeks. You've had a lot of away games. Um, you'll probably have a few knocks and a few different, few, few different carrying maybe an injury or two, but it's, it's your four weeks. You're probably having two or three of those weeks where, where they're going to be fairly heavy because that's the time where that's probably your last chance to get it to get it done. My belief is whenever your body is telling you to stop, it often sets that bar incredibly low, very, very safe. And until you start exploring the depths beyond that, uh, you don't start, you don't build up that confidence and that resilience mentally. And uh, I suppose the, the stomach, the, the stomach for the battle, uh, that ability to, to push through pain because uh, uh, games at the top level, you, you're you're almost continually needing to be prepared to go into that place. And when you're in that place, you need to be quite comfortable to continue working in that place and thinking clearly. And I don't think you can do that particularly well if if you're not exposed to it to, in training. So I suppose on the one hand, I fully understand the, the scientific uh, thing that you don't actually need that a huge amount in training physiologically bodily ways obviously it has to be exposed to that at some stages so that has to be built in but i do think there is a benefit collectively a, a pretty a, a very difficult to quantify and describe benefit collectively to a team to a team working hard together seeing each other suffer and come through that you know when it comes to conditioning for me and gaelic games I believe specificity is the most important thing. You try to replicate what happens in a game as best you possibly can during training. Because you have to, the muscles, the way you use the muscles, the deceleration, acceleration, change of direction. So you, you try to replicate that. And it's the same with the intensity of effort. Because if you look at during games, now the, the, those times during a game when we perform very high intensity activities they're probably the most important times of a game you're trying to either close down an attacker you're trying to get away from a defender but it only accounts for five percent of the game maybe even less you know if you look at the, the total if you look at the gps but they're, they're they're very very important so my 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 view the best way to get into the red zone if that's what we want to call it play games play lots of games in training you don't have to be 15 aside but if you play games i can guarantee you you're going to be replicating the same movement patterns as you do in a game. The same neural circuitry, the same motor neurons are firing. You're activating the, the muscles in the exact same way. Because if I go out and go for a long, steady run every day, that's not preparing me for the change of direction, speed, the deceleration, acceleration, reaction time that's required to play Gaelic games. I don't know anything that can replicate that other than playing games. And then you can decide within the games at what intensity do you want to play, you know, you can play short duration three minute games at very very high intensities but we can't sustain that for very long 
And my view on training in the high intensity zone is if you're going to train in the high intensity zone, try and replicate what you do in a game. So you, you, you're in the high intensity zone maybe for 30 seconds, then you're out of it maybe for three minutes, then you're back in it for 30. When you're in it, you're in it and you're able to recover. And the, 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 the players who really excel are the players who can perform these repeated high intensity bouts with short duration and can be called on to do it at any time of a game during the game because they're not fatigued. If you just train at the same time, the same sort of intensity all the time, your, your actual overall performance will start to drop. So normal training requires you to have peaks and troughs, to have different exposures. So like anything, you need to stress the body both physically and mentally to achieve an adaptation. And that adaptation doesn't ever reach that top point. You know, you listen to the roars after the World Cup and how they were saying how they were able to train so consistently all the time. I would say that training is probably does have small peaks and troughs. So they, what they were repeatedly trying to gain with those tiny, tiny measurable changes is so minute because of the type of sport compared to other sports we play.